He was alone when he died. Yes, sir. As far as we've been able to discover, he received no visitors. Do you have any conclusion as to the manner of death? He was alone in the fourth floor room of a country hotel, sir. He walked out onto the balcony and fell to his death. And the balcony railings were low? In my opinion, sir, dangerously low. But it did form some sort of barrier. Go on, Inspector. Well, under normal circumstances, the deceased must have been aware of the railings. But the circumstances weren't normal, sir. In what way? Well, there were signs the deceased had been drinking. An overturned glass, a whiskey bottle almost empty. Only one glass? Yes, sir. Do you know why he visited the hotel? Yes, sir. Now, Dr. Hale was a physicist employed at the Wingarth Research Station. He would visited the hotel on several occasions to concentrate on problems connected with his work. There's no doubt he did so on this occasion also. As a physicist, his work would be of considerable intellectual difficulty. I imagine so, sir. And yet he was drinking heavily. <coughs> sir, I represent the Wingarth Station and the deceased widow, Mrs. Hale. Yes, Mr. Tony. Uh, both my clients would like it to be known that if Dr. Hale had been working for some weeks past under considerable pressure, the research he was conducting was of tremendous complexity, such as to cause considerable nervous tension. Go on, Mr. Turner. Uh, Dr. Hale's work, uh, like all the work at Wingarth, is classified as top secret. Indeed, I am instructed that it was vital to our country's security and that Dr. Hale had largely completed it before his death. You suggest that this drinking was a form of celebration, rather a solitary one, shall we? More a relaxation, sir, after acute tension. I see. Do that. And there's evidence as to the amount of alcohol the deceased consumed. The pathologist who conducted the post-mortem is here, sir. Mm, I'll hear him now. Thank you, Inspector. John wouldn't do that. Laura, how can you be so sure? Aren't you sure about your son? Most of the time, yes. But then my son isn't a brilliant scientist. Oh, it's John. He's a corpse and people tell lies about him. Laura, he had been drinking. The pathologist proved it. Now, surely you don't think he was lying. Oh, John would drink heavily sometimes, and not because it solved a problem and never alone. Problems in physics didn't bother him, Harriet. He thrived on them, no matter how difficult they were. Once he'd solved them, all he wanted to do was sleep, not drink. He never drank on his own. At parties with people, yes. He could be very wild sometimes. He was bound to be, I suppose, all those pressures. Pressures? But you just said his work didn't bother him. It didn't. I was talking about Wingarth. He hated the place. But Laura, they thought so highly of him there. You heard them say so. Well, I heard Tarnley say so. Probably the only true thing he did say. John hated Wingarth. The secrecy, you mean? No. The people. Or well, some of them. Why did he stay on? He couldn't leave the work. The equations were so elegant, he said, like music. But he hated some of the people there. He had reason to. One of them killed him. Yes? I've just heard I've got to be out of here in two weeks. I'm sorry, but after that coroner's court... And rough, was it? John was brilliant and successful. He got very drunk and fell off a balcony. But that's what happened, darling. Yes, I know, but all the same, when you hear it said out loud, it... <laughs> in a room full of strangers... <laughs> I think he killed himself, Tom. I think he found out about us and he killed himself. <laughs> Only being John, he had to finish his work first because his work was more important than me. John's work wasn't finished. Well, they said in the court but he'd that he... would solved one particular problem and so he had, but what about all the others? Others? I had to go through his notes. I got Dr. Anthony to help me. <laughs> He said John had a dozen projects starting. Now, could you see John doing away with himself if he just lined up a dozen problems? No, but Even I Even if he'd still... found out that we love each other? No. You're right. Can you think of any other reason 
my brilliant and successful man with his whole life in front of him should jump off a balcony? No. I'm sorry. I was being stupid. You're feeling guilty. Don't you? No, darling, I don't. Not for anything I've done. And you mustn't either. You're accusing this security officer? Major Bilton killed my son. Why should he? He's in love with my son's wife. <laughs> Even so, why resort to murder? Divorce is so much simpler. I know that man killed John, and I want to see him punished. You don't believe me, do you? Silly, middle-aged woman with too much money and a guilt complex. You hardly knew my husband, did you? You were in love until he died. Deeply in love. The sort that makes demands, all kinds of demands. There's no time for anybody else. Not even one's son. The result was that John wasn't a very lovable man. Clever, a little reckless. Very attractive when he wanted to be. But not lovable. I could see that. Well, I admit it, even after all, it was my fault. But he was my son. He's dead. Laura, Darcy please. tried very hard for a while. I'll admit that, too. Then uh, Bilton came along. I remembered Edward and me. They were very clever. I don't think John ever knew. Well, they couldn't hide it from me. Harriet, I want you to help me. Laura, what can I possibly do? Even if they admit they're in love, that doesn't prove murder. Well, there's John's money, too. Edward left him quite a bit, and that goes to Dorothy. There isn't proof. You'll get proof. How? John telephoned me that afternoon from his hotel. I hadn't been well. He said, Bilton's coming to see me. Did he say why? He said it was about his work, but I don't think that was true, because he sounded worried and his work had gone so well. Did he mention Dorothy? No. Did you? I was going to. Then John said, I think that's him now at the door. I'd better ring off. Those were the last words I ever heard him say. So don't you see, you must help me. Would you repeat your son's last words? John said, that's him now at the door. I'd be better ring off. Are you sure? I just told you. No. No, the first time you said his words were, I think that's him now. Which was it? I can't remember. Which was it? But does it matter? You're accusing a man of murder. Everything matters. I can't remember. I've been ill. Oh? What was the trouble? Oh, some nervous complaint. Be a little more specific, please. My doctor called it depression. Your mind was disturbed? I was too much alone, he said. And you started imagining things? Harriet, you're being very unkind. Are you quite sure of your son's last words? Are you sure you ever received a phone call from him at all? Or do you merely wish you had? Harriet, for God's sake! I'm sorry, Laura. I just wanted to show you what it would be like if you had to give evidence. On and on, hounding and probing until you can't even be sure what day it is. Do you really do that? Five days out of seven. But how can you? <laughs> it's what I'm good at, and it has to be done. Now, do you really think you could stand up to hours of that? I'd hate it. I'd hate whoever did it to me. But it's the only way. It'll never get to that. Laura, you'd have to go to the police. And what could you tell them? Only what you've told me. The police never interfere with Wingarth. Only if it were murder, they'd have to. Wingarth is a world within a world. It makes its own laws. Did John say that? Yes. He was wrong. Nothing is sealed off from the law, not in this country. But the law needs proof. I'll get the proof. I've been to a solicitor and I've hired a detective. A man named Cobbett. Have you ever heard of him? No. He's very good. He'll get you the proof, and when he does, I'll go to the police. They'll listen. If you have proof, they'll have to listen. What if they don't? Then you bring a private prosecution for murder. Good afternoon, Mr. Carver. Will you come in? You've got a lovely home, Mrs. Hale. Thank you. It's good of you to come all this way. Not at all. Of course, I wouldn't come out here under normal circumstances. People see me at Mrs. House and they start talking. Know what I mean? That funny man, he's always out there. <laughs> this is a very dear friend of mine, Miss Peterson. Oh. How do you do? Very pleased to meet you, miss. 
Miss Peterson is a barrister. Oh, a bit early for lawyers yet, Mrs. Ayle. This isn't a professional call, Mr. Cobbett. I see. You know the story? Yes. And? I'm here as Mrs. Hale's friend. Now, won't you sit down, Mr. Cobbett? Oh. Now then. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hale. I... You found nothing. Oh, no, I didn't say that, did I? But it's not very nice. Oh, never mind that. Well, Miss Bilton and your daughter-in-law, they, they've been seeing quite a lot of each other. I know that. Ah, oh, yes, but I can prove it. Times, places. Well? A discotheque, out near Brig. Well, apparently, some geezer starts chatting up the bird. Your daughter-in-law and Bilton, a very jealous man, violent with it. Well, he has to be old off him. Very odd behaviour for a security officer. Love is odd, miss. What I've seen of it. Have you any proof Bilton went to the hotel the day Dr Hale died? Not yet. But my son saw him there. Well, trouble is, I, I haven't been able to find anybody else who did. Uh, so far. But you'll go on looking. Well, it's what you're paying me for. Laura... Would you mind if I had a few words alone with Mr. Cobbett? Oh, not at all. Uh, forgive my asking, but do you think you can handle this? Well, I was never a copper, miss. I, I do 90% divorce work and this is my first murder. But I've got a nose, miss, I promise you. My, uh, my track record. She hates the pair of them, don't she? Mrs. Hale is naturally very upset. I think her fears about the way her son died are the product of a, a neurotic imagination, but I want to be sure. At first, that's all I thought it was. It's very difficult for a lawyer, for any sane citizen, to believe that a government security man would commit willful murder. But what about the personal angle? Divorce is much safer. Oh, yes, but Dr. Ale might not have agreed to that. No, I think Bilton had the motive all right. And I don't mean he just wanted Dorothy Ale, neither. With her husband dead, she's worth £30,000. And he could have done it as well. Big man. Big man in love. Opportunity? Oh, I don't know. He wasn't at Wingarth the day Dr. Al died. How do you know that? Well, a guard who works there told me. You got information out of a security guard? <laughs> Surprise myself sometimes, miss. Bloke like me, prophet's I. I wouldn't cheat your friend, miss. No, I don't think you would. Mind you, the Summers would. Tease it out till she got tired. I'm not like that. If there's nothing, I'll say so. And if what you produce doesn't amount to evidence of murder, I shall say so. Suits me, miss. Thank you, Mr. Cobbett. Oh. See you again, I hope, miss. I hope so, too. Goodbye. Bye. I think he's honest, and nobody's fool. So you won't try to stop me? Not yet. In fact, I'd like to see this Major Bilton, if it's possible. This is the best of it. What? Out there. Oh, it's beautiful, yes. It's more than that. It's hard country. Cruel if you let it beat you, but it's fair. You know where you are with it. But in here, 
You know, I never realised how childish clever chaps could be. Mischievous as monkeys, some of them. John? No. John was never childish. Mrs. Hale. Yes? My name is Harriet Peterson. Oh, hello. Will you come in? Thank you. We only met once, I believe. Yes, I remember. At my wedding. I am so sorry about John. I know you must be tired of hearing that, but what else is there to say? I know. People do try to be kind. Hello. My name is Bilton. Security officer. How do you do, Major Bilton? Laura asked me to pick up a little statuette that belonged to John's father. You said you could have it back. I'll get it. Um, would you like a cup of tea or anything? Uh, no, no, I can't stop. Laura's waiting for me in the car. Here we are. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Hale. Goodbye. Major. Goodbye. Harriet Peterson? Oh. She and John's mother were at school together. She's staying with her now. Oh, I see. Old school chums. John's mother's a bit in awe of her, I think. Is she so formidable? Oh, I suppose she'd have to be sometimes. She's a barrister. together. Her ideas of mourning are different from mine. She loves him, doesn't she? I can see how she might. You mean after John? Oh, the surface, he appears. Uncomplicated, direct, like a fall from a balcony. What shall I do, Harriet? Well, if Cobbett can come up with any evidence that Bilton was in the hotel at the time John died, tell your solicitor. Will you come with me? Stay another night. I have a very busy day tomorrow. Don't you ever rest? That's what the cottage is for. Why don't you come down sometime? As soon as John's business is finished, he will help me with it. Laura, you know I will if I can. Miss Peterson? Yes? My name is Latimer. From the Home Office. May I have a word? The Home Office? Yes. Come in. Thank you. Well, I admire your taste. Thank you. Charming, charming. It must have taken you a long time to find such a lovely cottage in such an isolated position. It did. Don't you ever feel frightened? No. Alone at night? We have a very capable village constable. And a touching faith in law and order. I live by it, Mr. Latimer. Hmm. What is your business? Oh, forgive me. You find me circuitous, so many people do. But my peculiar role is such that obliquity does have its advantages. If it's a legal matter, I can't advise you except through a solicitor. Uh, some aspects of it are to do with legality, or rather process of law. But I suggest we discuss them now. No, in chambers. Now, that wouldn't be fair to you, Miss Peterson. And I like to be fair whenever possible. A process of law to a barrister means money. And I will not raise false hopes. I haven't come here to offer you money. 
Then why have you come? Unofficially, I've come to threaten you. What did you say? To threaten you. You know, menace. Get out! Miss Peterson, listen to me. And <clears throat> listen very carefully. Dr. Hale consumed a vast amount of whiskey and fell off a balcony. And ever since the word, he died happy. That's what happened, and that's all that happened. Now tell me that you believe that. I shall be happy to believe what you tell me as soon as you produce the evidence to support it. Yes, the deceased's unfortunate mother suffers from delusions, but you do not, Miss Peterson. You're a sane and competent person. Now, if you insist on meddling in our affairs, we can come to only one conclusion. Who are you, Mr. Latimer? Whom do you really represent? Please, let me finish. We can conclude only one thing, that you're doing it for money, for no other reason. And this without even being briefed by a solicitor. And the definition of that, Miss Peterson, is unprofessional conduct. There is nothing unprofessional in what I am doing as a private citizen. The service to which I belong is very powerful. It has authorized me, in vulgar parlance, to frame you. And I will do so. Dr. Hale's death was accidental. Accidental, Miss Peterson. Now tell me that you believe that, or I will have you disbarred. The service to which I belong is also very powerful. If anyone's likely to be disbarred, it could be you. Mallow's gone off again. And that's all right. You're not going to wake him, miss. Why ever not? It's a club rule. Women don't understand club rules. They never have. All they can do is resent them and break them. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Hello, Uncle George. Have you eaten? Yes, thank you. Oh, let me take your coat. All right, Rogers, you can go. Now, sit down, my dear. Let me look at you. Ah, uh, that's the trouble with this damn club. Nobody looks like you. Why do you come here, then? Food's good, and you can sleep after lunch. Four hours of the day gone before you've noticed it. Is life so dull? At my age, you don't want a great deal of excitement. No, I suppose not. Well, that isn't to say you don't want any at all. Uh, I've been thinking about that telephone call of yours. You really were in a rage, weren't you? I had reason to be. That man Latimer's behavior was absolutely outrageous. Your mother used to have a temper, suited her, made her eyes sparkle. Suit you, too. It didn't suit Latimer. Lot of nonsense, you know, talking about having you disbarred, even with false evidence. What are you going to do about it? Well, there can be two explanations for Latimer's visit. Either it was official murder for reasons of national security, or it was private murder. In either case, they don't want any investigation because state secrets are involved. Which explanation do you prefer? I don't know yet. Let's examine them. Firstly, you've been warned off by someone who claims to have great influence. Do you believe he has the power to put his threats into a practice? I can't believe that. I mustn't believe it. You mean it falls into the category of things that can't happen, like... Um, Ministers telling lies to the House of Commons? I don't believe anyone can frame me. Then what are you going to do about it? I don't want to sound noble or anything. But there must be more to the law than a means of earning a living. The pounds on the brief. If the security service can commit murder, I want to know by what right, what law. And there isn't one. So if I believe someone's committed the most serious crime and no one else will go after him, I must, however much it frightens me. I'm glad that's out of the way. Now we can start making plans. We? You don't think I'm going to let you have all this fun on your own? Uncle George, I can't let you become involved in this. A shoulder for me to cry on, maybe. You're not suggesting I'm past it, though. Do you mean you want to act for Laura? If she wants me. They'll put pressure on you. I won't have that. No, you're not thinking. How can they put pressure on me? I haven't got a practice, or a wife, or children. Not even many friends. 
just a goddaughter who only comes to see me when she's in a bit of trouble. How can they threaten me? It could be dangerous. Oh, Harriet, let me do this. I want to do it. Just a little bit of excitement. All right. I'll let you advise. But you must promise not to do anything or see anyone. Splendid. Will you be seeing Laura Hale? Yes. Tell her to come to my office. What office? Here. Bring her detective with her. Somebody else you ought to see, too. Who? Chap called Weatherby. He was one of my company commanders in the late unpleasantness. In Whitehall now. Big gun, they tell me. Tricky fellow, but damn clever. Why do I see him? You've been threatened and you don't like it. Damn it, or go. You're a barrister. You're someone, aren't you? Go in and give him hell. Does he have the power to stop Latimer? I think so. Laura? Oh. Mrs. Hale. Hello. Do you know where Laura is? No, I'm afraid not. Her housekeeper said she went out hours ago. I can't wait any longer. I have to go up to London. Is it urgent? Uh, yes, it is rather. About John? I don't understand. Look, no, please, Miss Peterson, I want to see Mrs. Hale too. About John. And about Tom. Major Bilton? Yes. Look, I don't care what my mother-in-law is saying. I'm very fond of Tom, and he is of me. I can't and discuss I... this. No, I don't want to discuss it. I, I just want you to know what I think. Tom isn't a, a murderer. Mrs. Hale will ruin his life if she goes on with this. And she'll ruin mine too. Is that what she wants? If Major Bilton wants me to believe in his innocence, you might tell him to stop sinister gentlemen from Whitehall making idiotic threats. Naturally, you're indignant, Miss Peterson. I can see that. In normal circumstances, I would, of course, share your indignation. The circumstances I have described can scarcely be referred to as normal. Indeed not. I appreciate that also. Then surely I have a right to ask... Miss Peterson, why. please, may I finish? Very well. Mr. Mallow was my colonel, you know. Uh, yes, he told me. When he telephoned, he described you to me as a, a, a woman of spirit. I can see he's right, and I'm delighted. No one, no one in this department has the right to, to conduct themselves in the manner you've described. As long as I'm its head, nobody shall do so. But, Mr. Weatherby, someone did. A man called Latimer, you say? Yes. David Latimer. Miss Peterson, there has never been anyone called Latimer employed by this department. That's impossible. Forgive me. Weatherby? I see. Yes, sir. I'll come at once. But that's One minute. Jevons? Weatherby here. Huh? Come in for a moment, will you? Yes, the Latimer business. Sorry, Miss Peterson, I must leave you now. My master awaits me. But Mr. Jevons will look after you. He is our particular expert in these little matters. I want you to tell the whole story to him. I'm sure you'll find that he's far better able to help you than I am. Thank you, you're very kind. Not at all. Just tell him the whole thing. You won't be disturbed here. Good day, Miss Peterson. Good day. Miss Peterson, how do you do? My name is Jevons. Except at weekends, Mr. Latimer. Yes, that name does rather seem to obsess you, doesn't it? Last Saturday you came to my cottage, you told me your name was Latimer, and you threatened me. Oh, no, last Saturday I was in Oxfordshire, fishing. There were four of us. Uh, we were together all day. There was myself and an army officer, uh, a colleague, and a don. He was an Oxford don. Now, who could possibly doubt the word of a don from Oxford? Mr. Weatherby, perhaps? Uh, no, no, I hardly think so. No, my friends are Mr. Weatherby's friends. Threats, menaces, distortion, are those his friends too? He is much too important to be bothered by such grubby matters. You're not, and you work for him. Only as Jevons. He has no official knowledge of Latimer. And who does Latimer work for? Security, Miss Peterson. 
Weaned off is only one of my problems. I don't intend to convert that problem into a headache. A man may have been murdered. Oh, men are murdered every day, Miss Peterson. Most of them wear uniforms, some don't. It's unimportant. What kind of man are you? Murder is always important. Unimportant, compared with Wingard's existence. You have no idea what goes on there. No. That was a statement, not a question. How could you have? It's the best kept secret in the country. And it's very terrible. And John Hale may have been murdered. Can you really be as obtuse as you appear? Think, Miss Peterson. You're implying John Hale was a traitor. Very well. Prove it. We are not in a court of law, Miss Peterson. And therefore, I must take everything on trust. Trust! From you? Oh, well. oh there's a much simpler explanation, Mr. Latimer. I don't say you know Bilton killed John Hale, but you suspect he did. And you want him to get away with it. Why should I do that? Because he's good at protecting secrets. That's important. And murder isn't. You told me so yourself. I take it you were not impressed by the threat of being disbarred. I wasn't, and I'm not. What a very intrepid lady. Let me try another. You make about how much a year... That is none of your damn business. Let us say 8,000 last year. And how much of that came from prosecuting? Third? Perhaps nearer a half. Now, Miss Peterson, we're on very good terms with the police on your circuit. They listen to us very seriously. Now, if you persist in continuing your investigation, I shall warn them that you are a threat to national security and no longer persona grata with us. You're out of luck, Mr. Latimer. I've never had a brief involving security. Now, if we request the police to give you no more work, most of them will treat it as an order. I may not be able to have you disbarred, but by God, I can put you out of business. Don't forget, I know every chief constable on the circuit and their opinion of Whitehall. We'll see. The state may be your big brother, Mr. Latimer, but I have mine too. If you persist in threatening me, I shall refer the whole matter to the Bar Council. Oh, hello, miss. Mr. Gobbett, have you seen Mrs. Hale? Oh, she'll be along, miss. She left word with the housekeeper I was to... Wait here. Hard day? Well, let's hope they don't come any harder. I think I know how you feel. Oh, no, come on, miss. It can't be that bad. Not for you. Know what happened to me. If it's about the case, Mr. Cobbett. Well, it is, and it is. I think you'd better wait till Mrs. Hale gets here. Well, that's just it. We don't have a case. Not anymore. I beg your pardon? Well, you and Mrs. Hale might have a case, but I don't. Why ever not? Well, I'll tell you, miss. Three days ago, I got a line on a geezer who thought he saw a building at the hotel when Dr. Hale died. At first, he wasn't sure. Next day, he was positive. Then, yesterday, he didn't know what I was talking about. Then, last night, three other geezers dropped in on me. Very informal, it was. Four o'clock in the morning. Big geezers. Go on. Been warned off, miss. I don't carry a gun, and I don't do karate. And even if I did, I, I, I wouldn't want to get mixed up with that. And I'm sorry, miss, I, I'm handing in my portfolio. Well, that's all right, Mr. Cobbett. You weren't hired for violence. Well, I know it wasn't in my contract, but it don't make me feel no better. Did you know these men? Would you recognize them again? Wouldn't want to, miss. Only thing, I, I did get a feeling. Yeah? This is in confidence, mind. Well, they could have been security guards from Wingarth. Doing it for beer money. Would you mind telling Mrs. Al, miss? Oh, of course not. It's just that I, I don't feel I could face her now, not after letting her down like that. And I'd rather you told her than me. There's a full report for it in the post, and, and tell her I shan't be charging her for yesterday because I didn't earn it. <laughs> I'm sure you did, Mr. Cobbett. Oh, I couldn't take what they were dishing out, miss. Sorry. I understand. You've been frightened, and you're taking the hint. I don't blame you. No. I I'll let you both down. Are you going on with it? I am. Thought you might. Would you watch it, miss? It'll be a rough one. I'll watch it. Goodbye, Mr. Cobbett. Bye, miss. First murder and all. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Cobbett. Oh, that's quite all right. I have to go now, anyway. I've told Miss Peterson everything. Goodbye. 
What's the matter with him? He's been warned off. Oh, no. So have I. And don't worry, it didn't work. But it did with Cobbett. And the threat to him was simple. Violence. Oh, what can we do? Nothing's changed. We've just lost a helper, that's all. That's all, I think. Oh, no, there's the Wingard thing. You warned off Miss uh, Peterson, I think. I tried, sir. Unfortunately, I failed. Huh? Hmm? Pity. Not like you. Like the lawn, I thought. Oh, delightful. Tough as old boots. First, the reason she got for going on. Hale's mother is a friend of hers. Hale? She ever fell off the roof. Balcony, sir. What sort of way to die? It's happened before? Yes. It happened to a chap called Masaryk. In Prague. KGB pushed him. You chaps aren't too proud to learn from the KGB, I take it. I'm not suggesting, are you, sir, that I organized a killing? I'm not allowed to suggest a damn thing about you chaps, and you know it. Well, time has come for a different approach. Bilton. Get me, Major Bilton. Bilton. Green Garth Research Station. The list of names your friend Cobbett left us would be very useful. You think we should hire another detective? Several detectives larger and fitter than Mr. Cobbett. Sit down, my dear. You're uh, still determined to go on with it? I am. Why? I have been threatened twice for the good of my country. Or so I'm told. It's been suggested that John Hale was a traitor. But no one. No one has offered me a shred of proof. On the other hand, I can prove that Bilton's infatuated with Dorothy Hale and that he can be violent, particularly where she's concerned. And Laura is certain he saw her son the day he died. She has the right to find out if it's true. Very well. I put an agency onto it today. Threatened twice, you say? I've been to the Bar Council, seen my MP, and talked to the police. I'm sure they believe me. They promised to investigate. Then why are you so worried? I don't enjoy being threatened. This whole situation's a nightmare. Well, why don't you forget about the Hales? It really is none of your business. Well, I know these things happen in Russia, even America. But this is England. Home and beauty. It couldn't happen here. Could it? What do you want here? Let me in. Why should I? Why shouldn't you? I'm practically a member of the family. Just listen to what I've got to say. Then I'll go. Well? Forget Latin, my I can't. He's going to ruin me. I said forget him. There's a better argument. If threats don't work, try reason. I'm paid 50 pounds a week to protect secrets that cost 50 million. Do you think I enjoy being accused of a murder I didn't commit? If you're innocent, why stop me proving it? 
There's more to it than that. I don't go around pushing people off balconies. Nobody believes that except you and that neurotic friend of yours. Evidence. That's all I want. Well, you can't have it. Why not? There isn't any. There never is when you try to prove a negative. I don't believe you. You're paid to remove the evidence, and I think you've earned your money. Give it up, Miss Peterson. You'll save us all a hell of a lot of trouble. Why should I? Because you can't win. Convince me. It's a question of numbers. You're just one, one person. National security involves everybody, 50 million bodies. So when what one person wants to do endangers 50 million, you can count, Miss Peterson. So the question of whether or not I murdered John Hale is strictly academic. You really can't win, you know. We got rid of your detective. You mean you did? All right, I did. And we bribed your only witness worth a damn. There are other detectives. Well, they'll be got rid of too. Believe me, Miss Peterson, believe me, there's always a way. Is that in your rules too? Rule number one. Why don't you drop it? Because it's reasonable to suppose that you murdered John Hale and you ought to stand trial for it. Not because his mother hates me. And I want to marry his widow. I can see that a number of people might hate you. It's not entirely relevant. Your love for his widow is. You don't seriously think that I'd murder John Hale if I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Dorothy? Oh, come off it, Miss Peterson. She was going to leave him anyway. Well, I've no doubt that's what she'd say in the witness box. I wonder if it would stand up under cross-examination. But why should I kill Hale? For his money? Or oh, perhaps because he insulted you, as I just did. You have a very violent temper. I wouldn't hurt you. I shall reserve judgment on that. You walked in on Dorothy and me once, remember? Yes. I... we've been talking. I've been telling you the only thing I liked about Wingarth was the view, and that's the truth. I don't like science. I don't like scientists. I like the stuff they make, least of all the stuff they call hardware. I've seen what it can do and I hate it. You're in the wrong job, Major. No, you're wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because I love my country. And if my country needs that muck, it's bloody well going to have it. So you guard the secrets? Yes, I guard them. And bastards like John Hale try to give them away. Well, I somehow thought you'd tell me he was a traitor. It's true. We had a round-the-clock watch on him. He's what they call a sleeper, Miss Peterson. The Reds got at him at Cambridge, then put him on ice till he got this job. Are you trying to justify murder? All I'm trying to do is to explain why he went to that hotel. It was answered in the coroner's court. He went there to be alone, to work out a problem. Well, that was the pattern he'd built up, yes, but this time it was different. This time he'd gone to meet a live drop. That's a courier, Miss Peterson. A man from an embassy with diplomatic immunity to pinch our country's secrets. So you killed John Hale before he could pass on the information? Oh, you'd think that. I know you're bound to think it, but I didn't. Usually, we have a healthy respect for the law. Is that meant to be reassuring, For God's sake, listen. We knew the courier wasn't due till the next day. Then why go in the day before? Because... I love Dorothy Hale. I couldn't let her know she was married to a traitor. You still say you didn't murder him? And I didn't kill him. I broke the rules, but I didn't kill you him. Broke the rules how? I told him we were on to him. He killed himself. And the fact that he was a sleeper, can you prove that? There's a file, a lot of information, not what you'd call proof. And the only proof you get is when Burgess and McLean turn up on the other side of the curtain. Well, no disrespect to your system, but your sort of proof won't exist. Good night, Miss Peterson. Uncle George, I'm glad you rang. I must see you and Laura tomorrow. No, no, I'm in court. Make it four o'clock? Yes. 
Yes, you could say that. I've just had a visit from Major Bilson. That's the gist of it. You'll get it in more detail from Harriet when she gets here. He said John was a traitor. He said they couldn't prove it in a court of law. He's lying. It's possible. Mr. Mallow, we're talking about my son. If there'd been anything like that, don't you think I'd have known? Mothers always say that. These security people, they could say all that in court. There can be no doubt of it. Even if they couldn't prove it. They could prove enough. But why? They have a man of their own to protect, and they do tend to look after their own when they can. But John, his reputation, his work, my name, and Edward's. It would be a bitter time for you, Laura, but you'd survive. One does, you know. You don't want me to go on with this? No, I don't. You mean you believe those lies about John? My dear, I never knew your son. How can I believe or disbelieve? Well, what then? Harriet. What about Harriet? She's now in a very dangerous position. Bilton admitted to her that he saw your son just before he died. Then I was right. I don't know. All I know is that if John was murdered, if Harriet is now the key witness for the prosecution. Witness? But Harriet's a barrister. She couldn't prosecute Bilton because she'd be giving evidence against him. What does this actually mean, Mr. Mallow? Harriet's been threatened by very important people. So far, they say they'll take away her livelihood, maybe even have her disbarred. Can they do that? What matters is that they'll try. And with people as important as that, one never knows. Until now, she's only been a nuisance. But as a witness, if she gets any nearer to proving that your son was murdered, she could be in great danger herself. Are you telling me all this? Are you trying to frighten me? Yes, but for Harriet's sake, once she takes the bit, nothing will stop her. Government's nobody. I want you to realize the risk she will run if you make her carry on. I tried very hard to love my son when it was too late. I want to go on trying. Think it over, Laura. Take your time. I'll go and order tea. Hello, Laura. Hello. Where's Uncle George? He's gone to order tea. Good. I'm famished. Oh, that's better. I've been in court all day. Very tired. Not really. I won, you see. Uncle George has told you what they say about John. And? I don't believe it. How can I believe it? Surely you don't. Bilton would make a very convincing witness whether he was lying or not. But he did tell me he went to the hotel and I'd make an equally convincing witness. But Harriet, does that mean that we've got a case? Laura, I won't try to deceive you. I don't think the police will do anything. Well, what about the other thing, a private prosecution? I can't possibly act for you now. Didn't Uncle George tell you? Mr. Mallow told me a lot of things. He'll choose a good counsel for you, a QC, probably. Can't you just tell me what you think? Please, Harriet. Very well. I think you'll lose. You mean you believe that Bilton didn't kill John? My dear, I'm not concerned with beliefs. I'm a lawyer. My business is evidence. But I believe it, and I want to see him punished for it. I don't think you will. But he told you he was there. Yes, and the court will believe me. But that's all they'll believe, that he was there. And that isn't enough? Not nearly enough. We'll have the whole damn circus. Intimidation of witnesses, lies on oath, characters blackened, and at the end of it all, Bilton will be a hero. 
the devoted security officer doing his duty no matter what. Of course he'll be a hero. And you will end up as the neurotic mother of a traitor. And the only consolation we have is that our security service is efficient. And as a comment on the times we live in, I consider that appalling. So Bilton wins. This time. My dear, his sort always wins. Always? You're wrong, Laura. You must be wrong. I could never bring myself to believe that.